Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we have one more month of this year. Woo, boy. It has gone by quickly, quickly, quickly. But I want to keep in front of us the word of the Lord that, that came forth last year. And I know that there's already, the Lord is already speaking about 2015. And so there's some things that I want us to be aware of as we step into that year of 2015. Praise God. And I want us to keep, because when something has been spoken by the prophet, it doesn't mean that just because it hasn't happened that year, it doesn't mean that it's ceased or it's stopped. It's, it's been birthed. It's gone forth. So it's there for you to tap into and receive at any time. Praise God. And so 2014 through Brother Copeland was the, is the year of victory over death and the year of manifested love. And he says this. I'm not going to read all of it, but I want to keep this in front of us. Put your eyes where they need to be. Look at me, saith the Lord. Put my words where they need to be. In your heart and mind, says the Lord. Demand that your mouth and your tongue of faith do its command duty to speak my word and commune with me, for I have great plans. And together, we will get this job done. I will organize things for you, and I will run where you've only been able to walk. I will take you to places where you've never dreamed that you would ever even understand. And I will bring you into a place of holiness and a place of my presence with me that will bring you to that spot that we just once were just a moment ago where you don't know whether you dare speak anymore or not. Ah, for like Moses, I am standing on holy ground. My God is present and I am no longer his servant. I am his son and I serve him out of joy and thanksgiving. So give forth praise and know I am withholding nothing from you. There's more than enough plan for you to overcome every obstacle, not only physically, not only mentally, not only financially, but spirit, soul, body, finance in the entire spectrum of human existence has been prepared for you to walk in in victory hallelujah hallelujah already set forth for us praise God and I asked you I, I said in this year of 2014 what the Lord has had had ministered to me as we were up at the ministers conference in January of this year is that the things that we keep on our mind in our heart and coming out of our mouth these are important these things will set us apart and rise us above the pressure praise God and so I we talked about last week, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. A wise woman builds her house. A wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman tears it down. And so what are you building? What, are you, what is it that we're building in our lives? And I said in, in Hebrews um, chapter 3, and I was looking further at this, and I want to actually read this to us out of the message translation. Hebrews chapter uh, 11, verse 3, it, right? It says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And I said, God has given us the ability to be the prophet of our own life. We are meant to build things in our life through the word of God by what we keep coming, what we have in our heart and what we have coming out of our mouth. And I thought this was, I, I wanted to show you this in Hebrews um, 11, in, in the, um, this is in, the Message Bible, mm -hmm. starting in verse 1. The, fundame the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Hallelujah. It's our handle on what we can't see. Faith is our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors, set them above the crowd. And see, it's our faith that sets us apart from everything else that's going on around us. Hallelujah. By faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word, what we see created by what we don't see. Hallelujah. That tells you the power in what we don't see but it's a powerful force because everything in the earth responds to it. Remember, I talked about quantum physics and how everything that we see is contained of sub, subatomic particles. This, and, and a quark is the smallest subatomic particle that can be seen. Well, it's a tongue twister. That can be seen by the human eye through a microscope. And those quarks respond to the observer. They respond to the observer. Now, think about that in 
perspective to creation and all that was created. We know that the worlds were framed by the word of God, everything God spoke into existence. And those things respond to the observer, why our faith is important, what you believe Jesus said, right? Or the disciples asked Jesus in John chapter six, how do we do these works that you do, Jesus? And his simple response to them was believe, believe. And so all that's around, they, the, the things that are around us, they respond to the observer and what in the declaration of faith that comes forth out of us. They respond to us. God created it and purposed it to be that way. And so the things that we keep on our mind, in our heart and coming out of our mouth, I said we need to, on a consistent basis, evaluate what's going on on the inside of us. We need to con- constantly do that self-check and evaluate. David said, search me, O God. If there be any wicked way in me, Lord, search me. And you know, what is it that your thoughts are constantly drawn towards? Think about what it is that you're thinking about on, on a continual basis. And the things that we have in our heart, because see, what the devil wants to do is he wants us to fellowship with the problem so that that has preeminence on our heart instead of fellowshipping with him. That's why he works so hard to stir up trouble, right? And stir up our emotions. And I want us to touch on that tonight where emotions are concerned and our feelings are concerned. Because you know what happens is that people make a God out of their feelings. They're so used to bowing to their feelings. I mean, they go to church if they feel like going to church. They exercise if they feel like exercising, right? They read and study if they feel like reading or studying, right? They spend whatever it is they feel like spending. They say and talk to people however they feel like talking to people. And it destroys relationships. All kinds of things. But we looked in here that, oh, oh, that it's the counsel of the Lord, right? Right? We look to the counsel of the Lord, not to the counsel of our emotions, right? If to steer our course rightly. And I wanna give you where that was in the book of Psalms or Proverbs, right? Um, a wise woman builds her house. I wanna make sure that you have that. That's Proverbs 14, one, right? And then David in Psalm 139, 23 and 24. That's where he says to search me, search me. Hallelujah and that we do that on a regular basis. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 1, chapter 5, that we attain to sound counsel so that we will steer our course rightly. There's something that I want to show us in 1 Kings, and this is with Elisha, and this is important for us to see because God has a plan and a path, right? We looked at um, in Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified. It says that we are God's handiwork, his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, right? To live and walk in those paths, I think Mike has it up, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So he has already things prearranged for us. You know, it's interesting because when you look at the example in the wilderness, there was 1.5 million Israelites that came out of Egypt. There were only two that went into the promised land. Now think about that. And why the enemy worked so hard, because the promise was already there. It was already laid out for them. They had yet but a few days journey to get to the promised land. But it was out of emotions and feelings and everything that was provoked in them. See, Egypt was still on the inside of them. And so you have 1.5 million that come out of Egypt, right, into what God has already laid out for them, already promised for them, and you only have two that went in. Now, there was more than two that went in, but two of the original 1.5 million is all that went in. The others that went in were birthed, right, in the wilderness, and they went in. But all those missed out. So you see where the, I mean, the, the Bible clearly shows us that if we will drive out the enemy, there is much for us to obtain that he has already set aside for us and to us many times it's driving out the enemy of our soul right our mind our will our emotions right and maintaining control over what tries seemingly to control us in John chapter or Luke chapter 17 54 I think it is yeah Luke no excuse me Luke 11 53 and 54 
Jesus, the Pharisees and Sadducees are basically, uh, they, they just continue to question Jesus and question Jesus and question Jesus. And finally, it comes down and it says um, in 53, as he left there, the scribes and the Pharisees followed him. See, they, they weren't finished with him. Notice that. They, they weren't finished, right? They, did, they, they, didn't get, they didn't do what they wanted to do, right? So, so it says they left and they followed him closely and they began to, en- they began to be enraged with and set themselves violently against him to draw him out and provoke him to speak of many things. Verse 54, secretly watching and plotting and lying in wait for him to seize upon something that he might say that they might accuse him. And so you see, the same way that the enemy tries to provoke us where our emotions and our feelings are concerned, to push us to the point to say or to do something that is outside and away from the will of God. See, because that's what the devil wants to do is he wants to get you to follow your emotions away from the will of God. And so the same here with Jesus. They kept pushing him and pushing him and pushing him to the point where they, they wanted to try. They were just watchfully waiting. Ha, 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 we've, we've got him now. We've pushed him to the edge. We've provoked him to the point. Let's just wait and see what he says. Now just think of that in light of our own life, in light of, of what we do in the middle of pressure in a circumstance, right? And so, you know, David, um, what, Psalm 27, verse 13, David said this. He said, I would have fainted had I not believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And so we talked about that word believe. If he had not believed in the goodness of God, if he had not believed in the promises of God, he would have fainted. That, that means he would have given up, changed direction, gone a different way, forget it, I'm done. And so many times people just get to the point where they give up and they quit because they don't feel like going on anymore. And what I'm saying is God has equipped us to not be limited by that. Because what happens is when you stay in that place, you just stay in that carnal realm, right? And you never live beyond that. You never live further than that, beyond your emotions. They tell you where to go. They tell you what to do. They tell you to stop, right? I mean, think, just think about feelings anyways. You go to bed feeling one way, and you wake up feeling a completely different way. I mean, just how fickle really are feelings, right? You buy something one day, and you're so excited about it, and then you've got to pay for it two months later, and you don't feel like paying for it. I mean, so those are feelings, really. And feelings are fabulous when they support us. That's wonderful. But we have got to come to the place where we are mature enough that when the feelings aren't there, we will still do what is right. Even when the feelings are not there. Galatians 6, 9 says, don't grow weary in well-doing, Right? Don't, go re- don't, yeah, don't grow weary, right? It says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. So it's saying if I keep doing what's right, if I keep doing the right thing, there's a reward at the end of that. You know, Gloria Copeland years ago said this statement. She said, the power lies in consistency. The power lies in consistency. It's so true. That's true in our life. Praise the Lord. Because we talked about, right, in, um, in the book of Romans, where it says to, in 12, uh, to every man has been given the measure of faith. So we all have that measure, but there's a developing. Just like we all have that bicep muscle, but there's a developing that takes place because some can lip, lift much more than others because they've developed that. And that's how it is with our faith, where our faith is concerned, right? And so Elijah, I want us to see this where Elijah is concerned because I... Because well, let me explain this, where the, the flesh, okay, when we talk about the flesh, because in case anybody doesn't understand that, the flesh man just does whatever he feels like, because he's not born again, he's not renewed, right, the carnal man, right, the carnal man is born again, and the seed is in him to do what is right, but he's not made the decision to do what's right, and then you have the spirit man, Because we're to be what? Led by the Spirit of God. We know that Romans, in the book of Romans, Romans 8, 14, right? It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, isn't that interesting? It says the sons of God. It doesn't say the children of God. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's maturity. That's maturity. And the body of Christ to go where God wants us to go, that glorious church without spot or wrinkle, I'm telling you, that takes mat- its maturity. And God is looking for a mature church 
the, the, all those promises that that 1.5 million that was set aside for them to walk into, praise the Lord, God has uh, all of those promises that are written here, set aside for us, just as he had the promised land for them, for us to walk into, and yet many miss out because they fall victim and become overcome. We looked at that last week, or we looked at that the last meeting that we had in um, the book of Corinthians, right? They were overcome in the wilderness, and God was not well pleased. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. They were overthrown in the wilderness, and it says, and God was not pleased with this. And it's the same with our circumstances. The enemy wants to put pressure where our circumstances are concerned to get us to be overthrown by our circumstances. And then it goes on to say, uh, um, let's just look at that before we look at this with Elijah, because uh, I just I want you to see this. And um, let's see, Get over here, First Corinthians ten five. That's right, First Corinthians ten five. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. And then you go on to see, and God was not well pleased, and it goes on to say, and all these are things of the flesh. All these things have to do with feelings, committing fornication, idolaters. I mean, you go through murmuring and complaining. <laughs> now, all these things happened unto them for an example, for us, right? They were written for our admonition. Now go down to 13. It says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Let me just say, we all live in this world, and temptation is in front of us. Every turn, we have a temptation to yield to feelings and emotions, right? I, I wrote this down because I think this happens so many times. The moment someone hurts us or we are stung by disappointment, the enemy whispers lies to us, emphasizing how cruelly or how unjustly we've been treated. And we start to listen to those lies. And what happens is they wind themselves around us and we now become a prisoner to those lies. That's why we talked about forgiveness, right? in the book of Corinthians where he says we're not ignorant of the devil's devices and he tries to trap us where our feelings and our emotions are concerned but if we would yield to wisdom that wisdom is in front of us when you look at Proverbs uh, chapter 1 where it talks about wisdom Proverbs 1 I think it's in 20 Proverbs 1 20 and I love this because to me this speaks to us it's available for us Proverbs 1 I went to Proverbs 20, but it's Proverbs 1. Yeah, 20. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the, sh in the city, she utters her words saying, How long are you going to stay simple? <laughs> and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof, and behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. And what that's saying, that, why, why, does, why are those specific places chosen that he says this? It's where we live. That, right there, that was where life happens. And wisdom is available to us in every area of life's existence. God's wisdom is available to us. And he says, how long are you going to stay simple? How long will you not heed and listen to my, listen, hey guys, I sent one that's been there. And so I've got a way, and my way is easier, and if you just listen, right, this would go a lot better for you. <laughs> and yet, it's interesting because in Matthew, in the book of Matthew, right, uh, in Matthew 26, 41, when Jesus is going into the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he asks his disciples, and he says, as he's going to go further to pray, he's got Peter and a couple others with him. Well, he had all of them. They stopped at one point. Then Jesus goes further with Peter and a couple others. And he says, you know, will you not watch and pray, right? And he tells them, watch and pray. I'm going to go pray. I want you to watch and pray, right? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is what Jesus said when he came back. Jesus left them, said, watch, right, a few verses up. He left them, goes and prays. Jesus comes back, and they're asleep. They're asleep. And he said, could you not watch an hour? Could you not watch an hour? And then he says, huh, the, and he tells us, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
that voice of the flesh turned up, turned up, turned up, turned up, till the voice of the Spirit becomes so weak and so faint. And so for us, it's turning up the voice of the Spirit and turning it up until the voice of the flesh becomes weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so what we have to do is when those emotions and when those feelings come, pay attention to where they want to take you. Pay attention to where they want to take you. Praise the Lord. A few other things I wrote down here. <clears throat> yes, the spiritual discipline to do what's right, even when you don't feel like it. That's what that discipline is. Discipline is doing what's right even when we don't feel like doing it. And so what Jesus shows us through the scriptures is that we can do something about emotions and feelings when they come. There is something that we can do, and that's yield to the voice of the Spirit. This is what Jesus in Isaiah, Isaiah 11, this is speaking about Jesus. We're to live a life of discernment. In Isaiah 11:2, this is what it says about Jesus. You know that's something that I pray over my children? Lord, I thank you that they have the spirit of discernment and understanding, right? Discretion and wisdom. These are important things. And I see there's situations that my kids even face at the young age that they're at. And they can, they can discern things. They can just, at that age, they can do, well, that's the life that we're to live. Free from all this clutter, right? That helps us to live that life of discerning. This is what it says in 11.2, and it's talking about Jesus. It says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. You know, the Spirit of the Lord doesn't just rest upon us, but it's in us. It's in us. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, <coughs> the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding. What makes him of quick understanding? Spirit. The Spirit makes him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. So he's, what's that saying is that Jesus didn't base his decisions on anything out here. It was here. It was here. The listening in here. Praise God. And that's the life we're to live, the spirit-led life. We're to live a life of discernment. Emotions keep people in the carnal realm. I want, I think, I feel. And they never live beyond the shallow realm of that. And so just like that 1.5 million that didn't go in, I don't, I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be me. I want to yield and receive all that God has for myself, for my family, for my children. Praise the Lord. And I want to teach them this wisdom because they're watching, they're watching, and they see. And so in 1 Kings, I want us to see this about Elijah. I had it. Yeah, 17. It says this, in Eli in, uh, starting in verse 1, it says, And Elisha the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Wow, that's boldness. Hey, guys, it's not going to rain because I said it's not going to rain. Wow. You definitely would have to hear from the Lord. That boldness would definitely, you would have to have heard from the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. There. I've commanded your provision there. Now, he could have listened and obeyed or not listened and obeyed. But God's telling him, remember those paths, that, that plan that he has predestined. Hey, listen, I've prepared things for you, and it's there. And it's there. And so we have a heeding to the voice of the Spirit, knowing that where there's a plan, his provision is there. Praise God. Hallelujah. And don't allow him to push you off or push you out of your wealthy place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he went 
And he did according to the word of the Lord. So he obeyed. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. There. Now he's to go there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain me. Hallelujah. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Man, that sounds so harsh, right? And, you know, that's, that's what people think in the world, really. Really, you're going to church? Really? You, you, you tithe? Really? You, you give? Really? Like, you do that? You know, I mean, th that's all they want. They, they just want your money. You know, don't you know that they just want your money? I mean, this is the world's thinking. And when you look at this, you think, wow, really? He, you know, this woman's getting ready to die. And he says, well, make it for me first. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. You see, this right here is showing us how important putting him first is. Because this really is what Elisha is doing. Elisha is doing her a service here. And when we understand it, Seek ye first, Jesus said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness his way of doing and being right. And all these things taken together besides will be added unto you. First, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And see, so we can't get our priorities out of whack, right? First things should be first. Praise the Lord. Because then everything else comes in order. Praise God. I mean, we can try and do it in ourself and of ourself, but there's going to be struggle there. There's going to be struggle there. And Jesus said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hallelujah. Stop yoking yourself up to your strength, yoking yourself up to, to whatever it is that you think is going to get you. Oh, yoke yourself up to me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so this is what Elisha is doing here. It says, For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of milk shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so now, it, when you go over to verse 18, and I'm not going to do all this, but there's some certain points that I want to bring out. All of these chapters, verse 17, verse 18, verse 19, verse 20 with Elijah is such a picture of our journey even with the Lord. Because what happens here is he comes up against Jezebel, right? And he, I mean, he's done all these mighty things and he comes up against the prophets of Baal. And he, I mean, there's a, 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 a great battle that goes between he and them. Pastor mentioned about it on Sunday. And we saw God far surpassed, right, and won that battle. Praise the Lord. And so Elisha is doing all these amazing things, right? And then we get to the place where now Ahab is going back and telling Jezebel. And he's saying, listen, this guy, he just defeated all your prophets. And so Jezebel is angry. And in um, 19 here, it says, and Ahab told Jezebel, all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow after this time. So she threatens him. Pressure, right? And so see, he, 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 he did all these mighty things for God, and then now all of a sudden, you know, when you read just above this, he just ran. In the strength of God, he had just ran to, the, to, to all these days for, of where Ahab had gone to Jezreel. And so, you know, he's a little tired. He's a little tired. And so his emotions kick in. 
you know, being tired is, t- I t- my son, Andrew, of all, all of my four babies, my son did not sleep through the night until he was nine months. Talk about sleep deprivation. <laughs> that is awful. That is awful. That is an awful place to be. And your judgment isn't right. You're, I mean, so many things. And see, that's what emotions do to us. Is what happens is when emotions get stirred and something happens and they touch that emotion button and they get all stirred, is your judgment. It alters your judgment. And you're not, you don't judge things right. And so that's why I said we got to go back and yield those to the word, praise God, so that we steer our course rightly and we don't get off. And we don't ruin relationships and, and, and all these things that, that the enemy wants to try to provoke us. As we saw, Jesus said, just lied in wait to wait to see if Jesus would say something that they could catch him in. Hmm. See, the things we keep on our mind, in our heart, and coming out of our mouth. And that we do that continual search on what's going on on the inside of us. And so Elijah, he's, now he's afraid. Now, God's just done all these amazing things. And so he, just, he gets a threat from Jezebel. And he's afraid. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. Look at how far emotions can take someone. Really. God, I know, I just did all these amazing, marvelous things, but you know what? I'm worn out now. And, you know, I, I'm in fear here. So, you know what? I, I just want to die. Forget it. Done. The emotions aren't there anymore to, to keep me going. I really pushed him that far and said, It's enough now. Oh, Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. You see the heart of God? The heart of God. He's always there. See, I said, we looked at the mindset of Jesus, and we saw that his mindset was his oneness with the Father. And we looked at that in um, John 16, 32. He said, he, when Jesus was just, bef- just getting ready to go to the cross, and he said, you know what? All you guys are going to leave me. Like, he already knew it then. You guys are all going to leave me, but I'm not alone. My Father is with me. Behold, the hour comes, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own and shall leave me alone and yet I'm not alone because the father's with me hallelujah his mindset what he kept on his mind now what did he keep out of his mouth he said I only say what the father tells me to say I only do but what the father tells me to do praise the Lord and, and I want to say emotions are not wrong they're, because they do support us they're, they're a wonderful thing and, and having the emotions is not sin it's following them Remember in Ephesians 4, because Paul said, hey, listen, be angry. I get it. I get it. Things are going to happen in life. You have emotions. You have feelings. Be angry. That's going to happen. But don't sin. And don't let the sun go down on your anger. So he's saying, you're going to have the emotion, but he's saying don't do the wrong thing and don't wait to deal with it, right? And so what I'm saying is our building ourselves up in this word so that we know what our response should be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the heart of God. So he sends an angel to minister to him. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water um, at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat before the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and he did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights. Is that supernatural? Look at the supernatural strength of God. The supernatural strength of God. That's a picture of that for us. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the ch-. He's, he's feeling sorry for himself. He goes into a cave and he's feeling sorry for himself. And I ministered this a few years ago. The thing about when you get into that place and you go and you just hide in that cave is the, the only thing you're hearing is your own voice, really. Because you're just hearing the words coming right back at you. Oh, woe is me. And that's all you're hearing, right? And so, but see, that the devil uses that. 
He lo- that's the place he wants to push us into, right? And so he's in this cave, and God's saying, what are you doing here? And he's saying, oh, I'm the only one, God. It's just me. I'm all by myself. I've done all this for you, and it's just me. And, you know, and he's having a pity party in here. Now, what's interesting about that is he actually makes a comment that's not true. And see, we've got to watch this because, see, people will yield to their feelings and not truth. It, will, it warps things because people have yielded to that feeling long enough where that becomes truth for them, you know, because they've been touched in that spot, you know, become callous, right? And so what's happening here is he is so yielded to his feelings that actually what he says here is, is not true. He says, I, even I only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Now we know, if you look a few chapters back, Obadiah had saved like 50 prophets and put and hid them away, or more than that, and hid them away and was feeding them bread and water against what Jezebel had decreed and said. He took those prophets of God and he hid them. And so right here, what what he's saying is not even true. It's not even true, but his emotions are talking now. And so he can't even filter the truth. He, he, he's, he's deceived, right? And so it says, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord and behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Now remember I said, we live a life of discernment. We live a life of discernment. We live from the inside out. And this is a picture of this here. It's not in all this great acts and all these things out here. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. A still small voice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That we are in tune with that still small voice. Praise God. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Again, the Lord saying, Would you, come on, get over it. Let's go, let's do what I have for you to do. I have greatness for you. I've already prepared this for you. Let's go. And he said, I have been very, again, right? I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain my prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away again to the pity party. He's not over it. And the Lord says unto him, Go, return unto thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And then he goes on to say, How many there? He says, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. Hallelujah. You're not alone, Elijah. See, so God, God is getting to the point where he's bringing him the truth to get him out of that place where he's deceived by his emotions. Elijah, I've got 7,000, and they're just waiting for you to stand up and take your place. You know, and then you go on to see he's got Elisha prepared for him, and he's going to go and give his mantle to Elisha and all the wonderful, amazing things that Elisha's going to do. And God's going to bring Elijah with him in a chariot of fire. Praise God. But see, he couldn't see any of that. He couldn't see any of that. Hallelujah. And that brings me to this back in Hebrews. Because we said by faith, right? We know that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And what are we building in our life? Are we tearing because a wise woman builds her house? A wise woman builds her house and a foolish one tears it down. And so are we yielding like that foolish woman to, and tearing things down? Or are we allowing, are we building things in our life? In us, in our husbands, in our, in our, in our children, right? In our workplaces. What are you building? What are you saying? What are you thinking? Evaluate. Hallelujah. Because God's got a plan and it's a great plan. And if we stay with him and stay yoked to him, it's not burdensome. It doesn't have to be. Are there things that you have to walk through? Absolutely. We looked at this. There's no temptation taking you such as is common to man. Temptation is in front of us every single day, all the time. And there, I was talking to Linda before the service. There's not one of us that has attained and come to the place that we are so there that we don't have to deal with our emotions and, and do something about it and yield to the word. Every one of us, every one of us, hallelujah, praise God. 
And so I love this because by faith we see, this is again in the message translation, and I just thought this was so good. By faith we see that the world uh, was called into existence by God's word, what we see created by what we don't see. By an act of faith, Abel brought a better sacrifice to God than Cain. It was that he believed, not what he brought, that made the difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was what he believed. It's not what he brought that made a difference. It was what was going on on the inside. Do, do you see that? It was the inside. Hallelujah. That's what God noticed and approved as righteous. After all these centuries, that belief continues to catch our notice. By an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked all over and couldn't find him because God had taken him. And we know on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. It is impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. I love that. That he cares enough to respond to those that seek him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what he was told. The result, his family was saved. His act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of the unbelieving world and the righteous of the believing world. And this is the people in the hour and the time in which we live. This is so important for us. Jerry Seville had declared in this new year that we're coming into the greater glory. That shall continue, right? And even more with manifestations and and, and the glory and things that God wants to do. Hallelujah. And there is a dividing line between you and the world, and it is your faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. And your, your feelings will hold your faith hostage. You know, it is so important for your future and your success, your ability to see beyond where you are. Your future, your success, relies upon your ability to see from where you are. Because what, happened is, it, it, what happens is people become so preoccupied with their present, they get locked into the present. It locks them out of their future. And so we must be aware. Jesus said, watch and pray. That watch, that's be aware. Be aware because we have an adversary. Paul tells us here, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. And so we talked about forgiveness. And, oh, and that helps us in evaluating what's going on on the inside of us. And we prayed that prayer where forgiveness is concerned. And, and I don't know if you guys continue, but I had said to continue it in the amount of time that Annette Caps had said, you know, to continue it. Because we think of forgiveness as, well, you know, someone who has, you know, done this horrible thing against us. But it's not just that. It's all the small things that try to add up. Yes, it's that, but it's also all these small things where the enemy tries to entangle us and entrap us, right? And so, oh, I want to remain free. I want to live that life of discernment that still small voice. And I don't want anything to hinder that and be in the way of that. Praise the Lord. And that maturity, praise God, that mature body of Christ that God's looking for, these promises that we want to walk into. Hallelujah. And live out. And this is what it said, I fully and freely forgive all institutions, organizations, situations and circumstances, corporations and persons. I loose and let go all erroneous beliefs, ideas, and judgments, misplaced anger, bitterness, resentment, and criticism. I let go and let God's love do its perfect work in me, through me, and for me. I let go and let God's love do its perfect work in my spirit, soul, and body, in my mind, emotions, and affairs. I give thanks that peace, health, joy, happiness, and prosperity now reign supreme in me and my world. Divine order is now established in my mind, body, and affairs. Amen. And I think this is something good to keep before you on a regular basis in your prayer time with the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I'm excited about this year of 2015. And we are growing. As a body here, we are growing in maturity. We're a mature body. And the group of ladies that we have here, praise the Lord. I, this is leadership. Being built in you is leadership for those that God wants to bring in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead and close us out in prayer. Father, we just are so grateful to you. Lord, we thank you for that still small voice that we have, Lord, that we can heed to at any moment, Father, that you're always with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us, that you are an ever-present help to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. And Father, in this, this new year of 2015, Father, I just thank you for insight and understanding in us, Lord, that we are building your word on the inside of us, therefore building, Lord, things in us and around us and in our children and in our families, Lord, at our workplaces, Lord. Father, we thank you that we have that spirit of faith on the inside of us. And Lord, we thank you that it is the most powerful force on the face of this earth. We yield ourselves to you and all that you want to do in us and through us, Lord. We thank you for your sweet correction in our life. We thank you for your wisdom at every turn, Lord, that we have your wisdom and we can yield to it, Lord, that it's there for us to tap into and to receive, Lord. We're so grateful. I thank you that you have made us overcomers over every obstacle and every situation, Lord, because you, the greater one, are in us, Lord. You are for us, and you are never against us, Lord. We love you, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for strengthening this body. Father, we thank you that there is not one weak or feeble among us in this body. We thank you that this body is flourishing and increasing in every good thing, Father. We thank you for the harvest of souls, Lord, that is coming into this body. And Father, we thank you that this is a miracle-working church. Father, we thank you that signs, wonders, and miracles follow the word preached in this body. And Lord, we thank you that we are a safe harbor for those that would come in from the world, Lord. Weak and weary from the things and the ways of the world, Lord, coming unto you, Lord, to know the knowledge of the truth and receive your love that is life-changing, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this upcoming year. We thank you for what you have for this nation. Father, we thank you that this is a righteous nation, that this is your nation, that you love this nation. Hallelujah. And we thank you. Your word tells us that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And Father, we declare that Jesus is Lord over this United States of America. And Father, this night we do lift up our veterans to you. Father, we are so grateful for those that have sacrificed and given them themselves for the freedom that we have in this nation. Father, bless them, increase them. I pray supernatural peace upon them and their families, Lord. Prosperity, Lord, to them and in them. In the name of Jesus, thank you for blessing our military, Lord. Thank you for spirit-filled chaplains, Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you for this next president, Lord. Lord, we thank you for a righteous president, Father. We thank you that this, your body, Lord, has humbled themselves before you, Lord, and you have heard their prayers, and I thank you that there is healing in this land. Thank you, Lord, your blessing upon this nation. Father, we thank you for the mighty body of Christ, Lord, that, Lord, we are rising up in this earth as a mature body, Lord. Hallelujah. That, Father, we are, we are excellent representations of you in this earth, Lord, for the world to see and to desire, Lord. Father, we thank you that your love has been shed abroad in our hearts. We have that love, Lord. Hallelujah. And that love never fails. It never fails. We yield to that love, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, ta um, there is coffee in the back, and uh, Tanya made something, and then I also have um, some, sp some sprouted grain bread. The last um, thing I shared with you was the food babe, um, 
website, yep, and the breads that, that you definitely should not be eating, which that list was like, wow. And then what we should be, which pretty much like even my breakfast and even um, Addie's breakfast is Ezekiel bread in the morning. And so I have a certain kind of sprouted grain bread, if you guys want to try it, and an almond butter. Like we really don't do much peanut butter at all anymore, but I found my fa- Barney butter is like the best almond butter. It's called Barney butter. And so I have some in the back if you guys want to try a little bit of that almond butter um, on a piece of toast back there. Praise God. But we will um, be together in, in January after I come back from the minister's conference always come with, yes, a word, praise God, for us to encourage us for the year and and just for us to plug into and receive for ourselves um, for this next year, praise God. So I love you, and you are blessed, 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 blessed. I know, Angel, there's a a lot that, that's why a lot of times I don't have one in November. I usually take November, December, but I wanted to have our meeting in November, so, and just take December off, and then we'll be back in in January, praise God. You are blessed. You are blessed. Praise God.